Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I made these realistic style clone trooper gauntlets from Revenge of the Sith and Attack of the Clones. The gauntlets that I've made are these ones right here. These are based off of the realistic style, so it's different from the Clone Wars style. Uh, it has a bit of a different shape. Um, the template, uh, I actually just reused uh, the Clone Wars version and kind of modified it a little bit, but it's this guy. The templates for these gauntlets are available for free. Um, I actually have them already made, uh, so you can download them. The link is in the description. I have the gauntlet on one page, and the hand plate and elbow pad on the other page is the hand plate, elbow. I haven't made the elbow pad in this video, but I probably will do it in a future one. On a side note, uh, for the Republic Commando build that I talked about, I think I'm going to hold off on it for a little while longer. Uh, I tried making the gauntlets a, a few times, and I just wasn't really happy with the results. So I think I'm going to need a bit more practice. Um, so this realistic style might be some good practice. Uh, I also want to get out more templates. Um, so I just think my time could be spent more wisely in that department. As for the future of my channel, I think it would be better for me to do uh, simpler builds that are easy for people to follow along with, kind of like uh, this one, as opposed to more complicated builds uh, that require like lots of detailed pieces and tools and stuff. Uh, but that's a topic for another day. Uh, for now, uh, just enjoy this tutorial, and uh, if you make it, feel free to send me a picture on Discord. Let's get on with the build. So first of all, like usual, you will need to print off the templates and cut them out. After you've done that, you can trace them onto the foam with a Sharpie. I'm going to be using 5mm thick EVA foam. This is a brand that I found at Hobby Lobby. However, you can use pretty much any foam and it will work out basically the same. This type of foam is also a higher density foam compared to the one that I used for the Mandalorian build. That's just a normal density, which is more spongy, whereas this one is much more firm. High density foam is better for sanding and for projects that you want to stay still but if you've got something that's really flexible the normal type of foam would probably be better I'm just using this type of foam because it's what I have and I want to use it up when you're cutting out the hand plates you can see that some of the edges are straight and you can actually use a metal ruler to help guide your knife and that helps to cut more of a straight line whereas with the rounded edges on the hand plate you will have to freehand those so just go slowly and take your time. There is a line in the middle of the hand plate, as you can see, that is curved, and we're going to bevel that piece. And this is one of the best parts about EVA foam. It allows the foam to bend in multiple directions. Uh, this would be very difficult to do with like plastic sheets or something, but for foam, as you'll see, it works really well. When you're cutting out the bevel on the inside of the hand plate, you want to make sure that you're not cutting all the way through the foam. Just cut about halfway or three quarters of the way through, and then make sure you're cutting at a angle, so not straight up and down. And you'll want to do the same uh, on the other side, so you'll make like a V shape indent in the foam. Now you'll want to use a heat gun to heat up the foam and make it more bendable and this will also get rid of any curves that were in the foam when you first got it since a lot of these foams come in giant rolls and they will have a bit of a curve to it. Next you can put some hot glue in the middle of the trench area and then close it shut. You'll need to hold it in place for about a minute to let the glue dry and then you're good to go. Now the gauntlets are made in a very similar way to the hand plates. You'll want to cut out the template then trace it onto foam. Looking back on the template I did forget to add the bevel lines that I meant to put on the gauntlets just on those straight areas. I may go back and change it but if you know the general shape of these gauntlets then you should know exactly where to bevel it. I'll show it very clearly in this video as well. So it's only on the straight lines up at the top. We need to create a pointy section on the gauntlet and that will be done by beveling the straight edges on the sides of the gauntlet both sides and you'll want to bevel the sides of the triangle piece as well. Now 
Now just like with the hand plate, you'll need to hit the gauntlet pieces with a heat gun to help flatten them out first. You'll want to create like a cylinder shape with the big pieces and then just leave the triangle flat. When you're gluing it all together, you'll want to start with the triangle piece. Just pick a side and start gluing it on. I recommend gluing on just the tip, like to begin with, and then slowly making your way down, gluing only a little bit at a time. Hot glue can be very uncontrollable at times, so you'll want to make sure you don't try to glue too much together all at once, or else it could get out of hand. Once you have the triangle piece attached, I highly recommend gluing the rounded edge sides together first rather than the flat edge sides. And you'll see why when we glue the gauntlet together into a cylinder shape, the rounded edges are harder to glue together. So when the two halves of the gauntlet are still separated, the rounded edges are much easier to glue together. Just go slowly with this part and don't try to glue it all at once like I said. Just glue a little bit of it at a time and you should be good. Next we can glue the straight edged pieces of the gauntlet together, and because we beveled it earlier, this will give us that nice point that the gauntlet has. Because these pieces are straight and not rounded like the other side of the gauntlet, this side will be much easier to glue together, so you can use a bit more hot glue all at once. Now the gauntlets are complete, and if they are a little loose, then you can add some padding foam to the inside as I've shown in my other videos. But one final step is to add a piece of velcro to the back of the hand plate that will allow us to attach it onto a glove. Once that is finished, the gauntlets are now completed and you can move on to painting. These were a lot of fun to make and they were very simple, so I may do the rest of the suit depending on how difficult it is. I know that some of the pieces on the realistic style clone armor can be a bit more complicated because they have curves in them, but I'm sure with the magical flexibility of EVA foam I will be able to pull it off. I looked at a lot of reference images for this suit because it appears in so many forms of media, and there were always slight differences between like the action figure and the movie characters and like the video game characters so I tried to create templates that matched with all three of them so if they look a little different than they should be to you that's probably why the 2017 Star Wars Battlefront 2 has a great clone trooper model which I used a lot of images from I also used images from the Hot Toys clone trooper which has a very accurate sculpt I did try looking up images from the movies but some of them are really blurry and others just aren't from a very good angle so I relied mostly on the games and toys I think I have an idea on what color I want to paint this gauntlet, but if you have ideas of your own, feel free to share them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then I would appreciate a like, and if you're not subscribed, then feel free to do so if you want to see more videos like this one. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters and all of you guys. I'm happy to be making content like this and to be offering free templates, and I hope to do many more builds in the future. Until then, may the force be with you. Bye guys!